um i'll call upon my next speaker uh, because it's a bit of overlapping uh, so um, shweta is our own fellow um though we call it as a student but uh, she has um, an astute yoga practitioner and has many awards uh, to her credit so without wasting much time i'll ask her to start her uh, topic on yoga and once she finishes this uh, let us uh, you know come to a discussion part of it so thank you uh thank you uh, good morning everyone uh, thank you for having me here uh, i don't know if i deserve to be in such a big uh, panel of big speakers but i will try to give my best here so i just put up this pictures here uh, to show that uh, these are two faces of me both are equally important uh, to me and uh, the second one has actually helped uh, take the first one forward without uh, putting me into much of uh, pain so let's see what we can come out of this presentation so uh, to begin with uh, many of you might be thinking yoga is like complex asanas many difficult postures not really it is not an it's not just an exercise regimen it's a way of life you have to inculcate it in your life uh not just uh, i'm i put this picture because mahesh sir so showed one contorted picture of me i prefer to do such uh, uh, light poses also which uh, helps us in mindful breathing and living with discipline is important because whatever exercises that we learn have to be done on a routine basis uh, every day uh, very strictly and stringently without compromising on the uh, uh, compliance that in, that is very important so regular practice of yoga has a huge impact on physical mental and emotional well being so how does it help a vyasa ji firstly there are three aspects that we'll be seeing in this presentation first is a primary prevention uh, and yoga actually helps to get uh, the postures right all of the speakers previous speakers have told you how important having a right posture uh, for a vyasa surgeon so a person who is practicing yoga for years by default will have a good posture and that kind of reduces their chance of having a bad experience uh, or an injury secondary prevention if you develop an issue then how to fix it then and there before they actually lead to serious problems later on and if you happen to develop a serious problem then how to recover out of it and how to treat it treating the aches pains injuries and spasms that are associated with the uh, tedious uh, vr surgeon uh, routines so primary prevention so how to get your posture right so uh, thanks to my friends here who have uh, volunteered to give these uh, photographs for me so this is how many people would be examining patients uh, but here this is not a mock picture this is how i sit by default i try to sit straight so um, it helps in uh, you can observe here in most of these pictures the surgeon seat i mean the uh, uh, doctor seat is at a higher level uh, than the patient seat and the uh, doctor is bending forward or stooping forward in some way or the other but here in my case the i have kept it at an optimal level the seat is uh, a little bit lower than the patient seat and i'm sitting straight so maintaining an erect posture throughout the day is very important and it happens it comes habitually if you're doing it doing yoga on a regular basis so here i'll show you few uh, exercises that can help you keep your postures right so this uh, can be done using any stool or any resistance band or whatever you have um sorry for this okay so uh, keep it as far apart wide as you want showing from the front first and then i show from the side as well uh, take your shoulders around shoulder rotation has to happen without the without bending the elbows this may look very easy for some people very difficult for some people but trust me once you start doing this you start feeling the relaxed uh, feeling here as you progress forward you can reduce the distance between the two hands much uh, as the distance reduces the difficulty level increases so for beginners you can keep it wide apart and do it it still works and you will start seeing the difference it will relax the neck muscles and the shoulder because those are connected so it really helps this is what this is the first one second one is something that is called the cat and cow pose very popularly uh, practiced across so this is the cat pose um you have to notice two three things here firstly uh, the thighs and my uh, hands both are perpendicular to the floor and uh, i am making sure i am making sure that whenever i bend forward my neck is all, it's all in one curve and here it's on the reverse curve so when i bend forward the breathing is out and when i bend back it is breathe in 
so if you can keep the breathing in alignment with the movements that you do then it is even more helpful so we'll move to the secondary prevention what exercises can we practice regularly day to day with less time uh, that is available for us and what can we do between cases to stretch out and relax those tense muscles so a uh, few of these already sarah sarah has shown let's just run through this uh, i'm standing shoulder distance apart my legs are shoulder distance apart and i'm doing the neck rotations neck movements that sir already showed like he said we are taking the neck to the extreme um, range of its mobility back as much as possible and front the chin touching the um, chest and side movements you can notice that my shoulders are straight i'm not lifting my shoulder to get my shoulder to touch my ear rather i'm trying to bend my neck as much as possible to touch the shoulders and then gentle neck rotation you can do all this with eyes closed but if you are a person who is prone to get vertigo then keep your eyes open when you are doing the neck rotation um this video may look a little fast uh, for the um, purpose of time i've speeded it a bit but while you're doing take it slow um understand that each body is different so you'll have to treat it differently so the next one uh, that we can do in between cases stand again shoulder width with the part then i first show what could be done wrong many people do this bending the knees to go back the intention is not to bend more the intention is to stretch the spine more whatever is your range reach only up till there it's okay if you can only do this or you can do this whatever is possible for you but at any point the legs should be straight you can notice that even on bending that much my legs are straight the whole purpose is to put no strain on the legs but rather stretch the spine as much as possible and in yoga we always do counter movements for any movements that we do so when i bend back i have to bend forward to balance it out so even in the ot when you bend back you can do a front, a front bending movement so as to uh, smoothen it out so again uh, the point here to remember is when you are bending back you have to inhale and when you are bending forward you exhale the in yoga the breathing and movements have to sync that is when you get the maximum benefit out of it. so i just try to put up pictures to understand what uh, which areas you are targeting so when you are doing the back bending that is called the ardha chakrasana you are targeting the latissimus dorsi and the trapezius muscle and when you are bending forward again the spinal muscles here along with the hamstring so your leg muscles as well as the back muscles are uh, taken care of so another one this may not be possible in the ot you can do this in standing posture also but this is something that you can uh, do as a routine on a daily uh, exercise you can add it in your daily exercise routine sit in whatever posture is comfortable to you and try to, to twist your spine to whatever extent that is possible it will help in elongating the spine and helps you give a better posture as will relax ease out the tension that is uh, in the spine so the same thing i am doing on the other side try to look as much back as possible and if you are flexible enough you can take it all the way around you can see my left hand coming forward and keep uh, i'm putting it on the right side uh there's one other thing also in this video which i uh okay after this so we'll do another posture uh, a front bending uh, posture for a side bending here i'm uh, sir showed the similar one uh, in an animation uh the side movements he also told it can be done in sitting position that's what we are doing here we are trying to stretch the side muscles to increase the range of motion i have moved on to my elbow on the left side or you can keep it like this if it's not possible same breathe in bend back, bend breathe have a slow breathing happening there when you are at that position and then come back so here okay this posture is not exactly what we did we did not uh, concentrate on the legs there i wanted to keep it simple but notice here that the latissimus dorsi intercostal muscles external oblique are all being put to use and here uh, the next posture that we'll be seeing has this muscles also being used so now we'll do some back bending so i am in a prone position here uh don't get intimidated by the amount of bending i do in the first go but i'll again show la variants of it where 
different levels of bending can be done to uh, make it uh, suit yourself as per your need and as per your condition so do small repeated sittings of this try doing multiple repetition breathe in and go back and slowly exhale in that position so here you can see i have not bent as much so that's how it goes so if you bend as much as i did in the first one then you are targeting the infraspinatus and the spinal extensor as well but if not you can still only do this much and still get maximum benefits out of it um next we we'll do some relaxation so we bend forward in whatever sitting posture is comfortable for you try to bend slowly and relax there here if you cannot do what i am doing then you can take a pillow a prop anything that can help you bend without having much flexibility this will kind of relax this posture you have to keep the breathing on slow and calm this is a relaxing posture called as shishu asana or balasana that is the child pose that is how the child is relaxing inside the mother's womb that's what they say and now uh, we see another posture here a forward bending posture see i am trying to show different levels here see you may be at any of these levels but in the end you will still get the benefits you may not be able to complete the posture like they say the journey is more important than the destination so even if you cannot reach the final posture try and attempt as much as you can so that the in the process of trying to bend you will still get benefit if the final posture is not possible for you again you can use a pillow under your knees so you can do it in a easier way okay so even this much bending is also okay try to straighten your back and you will feel the stretch more so like i showed the fetal pose um uh, relaxing pose and we top it off uh, with shavasana yoga always ends in with shavasana so you may not have time to do everything but never end your yoga session without shavasana because after all that metabolism that has happened in the body after increased blood flow to all organs you want it to come to an equilibrium so to achieve that at least a minute of shavasana is definitely essential so that's what i'm doing here let us not forget our assistants because uh, as much as we toil in the ot they toil harder to make your case go smoothly so now we have to take care of them also they also have a neck they also have a back they also have aches but one additional thing they have here is that you can notice that the sisters are mostly standing while assisting so they also have this additional uh, leg pain hip pain that will come due to long standing uh, you know doing this work for years together on a on a day to day basis so apart from the exercises that i already told uh, in the past slides we'll teach them some asanas some exercises which can help ease them ease their leg pains the blood supply to the lower limbs is uh, very great great uh, greatly reduced uh, or rather i would i'm telling you that sorry the blood supply is all pulled up uh, pulled down in the uh, lower limbs so they might develop varicose veins and problems like that pain in the legs so you can ask them to do simple postures like this which will help in having a good venous return the soleus muscle will pump you can ask them to keep moving their limbs while assisting just you know to keep the soleus pump activated or simple exercises that like these can be done at home if this is not possible you can take the help of a wall uh, a wall assisted uh, leg extension can be done so that way uh, with the legs being supported the blood supply from the lower limbs back into the center uh, can be stimulated uh, coming to the therapeutic part of it what is so special about yoga therapy so here basic um, commonly there is no immobilization and whenever we have a pain somewhere many uh, uh, normal systems of medicine will uh, stress on immobilization but in yoga we don't immobilize those joints we start them on gentle mobilization under monitoring under guidance we try to we don't push them to the entire range of their flexibility in this case but try to get back the range of motion in a graded way a graded way so then we have to strengthen those muscles which are in pain which are you know they have gone into some problem because they are not strong so you have to uh, strengthen it also that is also done and try to stabilize those joints and then gentle stimulation 
sustained relaxation. This is the whole mantra of yoga therapy. So wherever is the ache, first they'll have to identify what is the problem. Many a times we may have a pain in the neck, we may have a pain in the uh, you know back, but the cause may be somewhere else. Like when you're operating, your neck is not doing much, it's just sitting straight. But if your shoulder position is not proper, it can cause a pain in the neck. So it's opposite to the radial pain, radiating pain that we talk about. If you have a central cause causing a peripheral pain, it is the radiating neurological kind of pain. But there can be the other way also, where the uh, periphery is having a problem. So you're trying to compensate for it by uh, changing the axial uh, system of the body. So we'll have to figure out where exactly the problem is, try to localize it and strengthen all the joints around, not just that joint. So if you go to a yoga therapist with a neck pain, he'll not right away ask you to do neck exercises. He'll first ask you to uh, start with the fingers, then uh, hands, then the forearms, arms, shoulders. Only then after, you know, um, you get the idea that these joints and muscles are kind of stimulated, the blood supply has set in. Only then you go to the problem areas. So many people keep asking me, being a doctor, being a person of science, how can you propagate? Um, alternative therapies like this, yoga and all that, all this is bullshit. There are people who have told me this. You know, being a person of science, I watch for it because there has been solid research to support use of uh, yoga therapy is itself or as an adjunct to normal med modern, modern medicine to help in uh, backache, neckache, and all that. There are meta-analysis done, systematic reviews done. So this is not just goof up. There is solid evidence for this. So let's trust in the system and uh, one important reminder, yoga is not instant remedy for anything. There are people who come to me and tell, I have this problem, tell me one asana which will cure everything. It doesn't work like that. So you have to have uh, patience here. That's the important key here. You have to persistently practice. It is a long uh, process because the pro problem that you have got that did not happen over a day. It is because of years of wrong doings that we have done wrong postures and wrong practices. So to set all that right, you have a long journey. So you have to be patient and trust your uh, therapist. You have to really do that. So uh, I, we have made a quick uh, ready reckoner. If you cannot remember the whole presentation, just remember this one slide, which you can do in between your theater or whenever you feel like, okay, I want to do a short session of yoga. These are the go-to asanas, the uh, initial shoulder stretches that we did with a stole, later the back bend, front bend the cat and cow, and lastly, the child's pose. So this would kind of take care of uh, basic uh, basics assorted. Uh, huge thanks to my team, without which this would not have been possible. And I'm very grateful for this picture. I'll preserve it all my life. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Shweta. And uh, thanks for that wonderful demonstrations. Uh, quick, quick question that has been posted. Uh, one is uh, both uh, directed to Dr. Sarin. So, uh, Dr. Pradeep, who had earlier spoken, he said that he had some kind of uh, cervical issues. So, people who have already had these issues or uh, dysprolapse and thing, can they do the stretch exercises or strength building exercises which I had advocated? Can they do it? Or should they always go to, a, you know, their orthopedician or neurosurgeon, get their guidance and only then do or come to you and then do or they can start doing these simple exercises? Okay, sure. That's a very good question. I, I'm sorry I missed uh, mentioning about people who are already suffering with something. It just goes by, you know your body, you know the limitations. And if you want to do it yourself, please listen to your body. Where, where does it really give you pains and aches and stuff? So don't, do not overdo it. And that's what uh, Dr. Studia was also mentioning about being more mindful about your movement. Now, if you really already have a problem, was that treated? And all of us know that there are different grades of, say, a disc prolapse. So if the milder grades, they always heal completely. And we, we are not incapacitated for life. So we are just back to normal. And we just have to, in fact, regain our movement somehow. So immobility is never going to be a solution. And most importantly, take it out of your head that there are this kind of limitations with you, actually. Okay, you need to be more careful. That's the point. So when you are doing it, maybe one particular disc area you had a problem, but the others are also equally vulnerable. So it's good to get a supervised at least a one week or two weeks. So we also do have a dedicated professional yoga therapist as part of this entire program. So we really understand what works best for the person and then tailor make it. 
So a person who is already having any kind of uh, physiological or anatomical issues or a pathological problem, it's always good to get it completely screened and then get what is most suitable for it. It's like we prescribe medicines according to each person's, uh, you know, the, 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 the markers, that the body markers that comes out of it, actually. So that exactly goes with the exercises also because you need to be a little more careful. Because in the first place, you got the, the, the spinal problem because of some lacunae. So that's the point. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank and you, uh, sir. another uh, quick question was, uh, Dr. Danish Ratra had uh, well, Madam had posted that the body makeup of a, you know, a gentleman and a lady is totally different. So should we build up uh, much more uh, to, you know, to do the same kind of a work between a, a gentleman and a lady? Uh, should they always build up their muscle to that extent and then do? Or is it that... The same kind of an exercise is good enough. Okay, good question. Body composition is what we talk about it. The lean mass, the muscle mass and everything, the fat mass. So it is definitely different uh, among the genders for men and women. So women usually have a more proportionate, uh, you know, the distribution of fat mass and men uh, usually tend to have more of a muscle mass. So that is how we are built. So there's no point in looking at, so nobody's at any loss. I can guarantee that. So uh, they, they both are susceptible to obesity over a period of time. So the health consequences also vary uh, with the kind of uh, the work-related exposure of strain that you get into. But having said that, the answer to your question is, we just have to compete with ourselves. It's just that how I am today, how much is my thing? And there's this one simple point that I want to tell us with age, we do lose a lot of muscle mass and because of uh, inactivity and all those things. And this kind of a job, yes, you are at more risk of losing it if, as Dr. Natarajan was telling, if you don't get into an active lifestyle with preventive conditioning. So we call it as preventive conditioning. So even a person at 60 years, 70 and 80 years, even that person is expected to do preventive conditioning, strengthening exercises. So it's always good to get on to a strengthening exercise along with all the other things that we mentioned, if you feel that you are really becoming a little more imbalanced in your body because of the muscle mass loss, especially if there is a pathological underlying condition for that. Otherwise, uh, you don't need to really compare between the sexes or between the uh, people. We are all different, actually. We all have certain advantage and disadvantage because of this, uh, you know, differences. We just have to compete with ourselves. We just have to be the, the better version of ourselves as we grow older. So just be more protective. Prevention is the, the cure over here, actually. So it's just preventive conditioning, strengthening exercise. Yeah. Uh, just a quick uh, thing, uh, the other panelists, uh, uh, Kim sir, Muna madam, um, Murlidhar sir, there's anything to be added upon or um, anything to be sorted from the previous talks? So what do they all do to keep themselves fit, the panelists? So how many exercises per day? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, Dr. Murlidhar. Yes, sir. Murlidhar sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I actually um, do a bit of yoga and jogging and uh, walking. And uh, I, I think at least about uh, 60 minutes a day is what we need to spend on ourselves every day. This is a bare minimum, 30 to 60 minutes minimum we need to spend. And uh, as Shweta said, you don't have to be, you know, able to do the complete, uh, you know, bending. You know, whatever your body can do, you keep doing. And over a period of time, your body will definitely become more lax and more supple. And uh, I would definitely recommend everyone should have a fitness regime for at least th minimum 30 and desirable is about 60 minutes. And that's what I do. Muna, madam. I can't say I'm the most disciplined person, but I was so glad to see Shweta's presentation and I realized I'm, I'm doing the similar things though to much uh, lesser uh, levels than she is. So I guess that's it. And plus, I think many of us have our household responsibilities to run walking up the stairs instead of taking the lift and things like that. I think whatever said and done that does add to our uh, unconscious fitness regime. Well, I'm not a regular. I wish I was like Dr. Murli there. 
but it's all on need base. Every time a pain comes, it sends me a reminder and then there's an exercise regime for a few weeks and then it slows down until the next shock comes. So, you know, I, we realize only when we are having the pain, the need for doing all this, but with, when the other priorities come, this somehow takes a back seat. But I agree, we all need to be very conscious of this and continue to do this on a regular basis. Thank you, Dr. Yes. And uh, uh, the two talks were excellent uh, eye-opener for us. Sir, can I, I ask him? Dr. Natarajan, you don't have to ask him because <laughs> he either dances or flexes. That's so good, I think. Sir, uh, can LG sir can also put sir's input, sir? He should. He should. Uh, no, I started to run actually for the last uh, three, four years. And I find that, that is running itself is a very good exercise. You know, it keeps you trim and you exercise a lot of muscles while you run. Plus, because you don't want your muscles to go into spasm, you stretch also. So some of the stretches exercises which are which have been taught today, they are something which you uh, incorporate into your routine immediately before and after you run. So I'm, I'm I'm proud to say that over a period of three years, I've been able to run now about 6.5 kilometers or so per day. So at least three days a week, I, I run about 6.5 kilometers, which is a very good exercise. I think uh, you can incorporate in your routine practice because um, unless we spend energy, you know, if we maintain the same eating habits as we grow old, it has to go somewhere and that goes around your tummy. And I think it's easier to expend it rather than trying to control your eating. That is why I try to do exercise, yeah. Thanks a lot, sir. Sobit, sir, you wanted to add a point to it, sir. Well, I agree with uh, Dr. Gopal. And uh, you either cut down on your eating. What I do, I do try to do cycling thrice a week and a combination of mild to moderate weight training with yoga thrice a week. So it's alternate days. It's been good stay. Anish, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to sum it up in the form of two quotations, which I just thought right away. Keep talking to your body before the body starts talking to you, <laughs> and and swim by all means, but not necessarily in the vitreous. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There's one question from Ribu. I think it's addressed to Dr. Sarit. So, does heavy weights lift to hamper uh, lifting heavy weights hamper or help the vitreous surgeon performance in surgery? Uh, uh, Dr. Ribu, I'm I'm sorry. This is actually a research question. So I think we need to really, probably we can take it up and try to do it. But I can say from one of my colleagues, there's a, uh, one of the doctors here who is actually a heavyweight uh, lifting champion. And she even recently competed in the Karnataka Heavy Lift uh, Championship all as well. I see her the most energetic person. She's literally like flying in the entire hospital. So there must be uh, something to do with what all the kind of extreme uh, athletic sports that she has taken it up. But this is a typical research question. So I'm sorry, I do not have the answer at the moment because I do not want to say what just uh, appeals to us. But these are, uh, has to be proven uh, scientifically. But, but definitely you're not at a loss. And if you're doing it, wow, wonderful, congratulations. I mean, this is all what we all uh, aspire to. But the, the point of the entire thing is, any movement, movement is the topic that we are talking about. Any movement in any format is good enough, actually. That's it. Thank, Thank you, sir. Um, sir, so we'll try we'll try to get a ready record now for the, uh, you know, for the uh, exercises. Uh, I'll coordinate with the doctors, Saril and Dashweta and get it done. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I think we are already overshot by about 20 minutes. I'll just session. make one comment, Rajesh. Yes, sir. No, no, like very heavy weights, like does increase the tremor. So my heavy weights are like weights enough to tone the muscles rather than very heavy weights probably increase the tremor during your surgery. Thank you.